uh, today, today's technical program consists of three presentations, um, uh, approximately a little bit more than 10 minutes each of them, with the idea that we have time for questions and answers at the end. So uh, we have a presentation on gliders by Dr. Enric Palas with CSSE. Then it will follow by a presentation uh, about uh, high frequency radars by Dr. Javier Flores with the uh, Baja California Autonomous University. And then a comprehensive data management system at the SMIR um, uh, by Fabio Medrano with CSSE as well. So uh, with this, um, Enric, please. Yep, thank you very much. I'm gonna share the screen. Okay, hopefully everyone see my screen. Yes. Yes, okay, then thank you very much, Jorge, um, to give us this opportunity to, to show to everybody the work that we've been done doing um, um, with, with the gliders in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm Enrique Payasant, and I, I'm co-leading this group of monitoring the ocean with gliders. I work at FICESE. Um, <clears throat> Also, I, I put here some of my colleagues that, that also are uh, collaborate in this, in this group and some of the funding institutions that obviously supported our, our monitoring. So the general goals of our group, it's, um, there are two, two main goals. The first one is to construct long-term time series of essential oceanic variables. And the second one, uh, we aim to provide um, near real time data um, to assess some process studies. Some of them um, in the Gulf of Mexico for interest are understanding the sargasso blooms. Also, we, we want to estimate ocean heat content on, on near real time. And this, this can help for hurricane forecasting, for example. Um, we are also interested in measuring um, current intensifications for, for oil industry um, offshore activities and understanding um, water mass transformations. All these goals um, fit very good with the, the, the goals of the task teams uh, of ocean gliders and GQs. Um, we have specific goals during these years of monitoring since 2016. We've been monitoring pretty much mesoscale structures like these large warm anomalies or, or loop current eddies. We, 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 we sample many of them since 2016. We also sample um, cyclonic eddies that are in the Gulf of Mexico, sorry, um, like the Campeche cyclone that is in the uh, southwestern region in the Campeche Bay or other smaller cyclone, cyclones like this uh, um, um, loop current frontal eddies that propagate upstream the loop current. We are also interested in some processes, I, as I, I stated before, like winter convection, mixing, chlorophyll intensifications inside eddies, water mass transformation. And also because the, the, the high resolution data that provide gliders, and we obviously have been sampling um, some submersible scale structures like small intrathermocline eddies or subsurface eddies, um, fresh water filaments, and some processes like layering on the peripheries of the eddies. Um, Recently, we, 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 we have submitted, uh, in collaboration with Texas a and a, a project uh, to measure um, the loop current and try to identify what, where is the core of the loop current using um, gliders. So um, our fleet of gliders is composed by eight sea gliders. All, all are, are sea gliders. We're very happy with them. Um, we use different sensors. Um, we have ADCPs to measure horizontal current. We have CT to measure um, conductivity temperature. This is an unpump uh, CT sail. We have also a pump GPCTD, um, also to measure conductivity and temperature, optical sensors uh, that provide uh, fluorescence, backscatter, and, and CDOM. And, and also we have this uh, uh, microstructure sensor that, that we, we did not use yet. So we're very happy to, to use uh, in, the, in the future. Here I'm showing the uh, uh, absolute dynamic topography map. Red areas are uh, anticyclonic eddies, like this one Poseidon, and, and, and greenish uh, areas indicate cyclonic circulation. I superimpose the trajectories of, of, the, of the gliders during, during these years. This is since 2016 until the end of 2019. It's what, what I call a pre-COVID uh, database 
because we stopped our operations after when, when the COVID started and, and, and restarted operations now in, at the end of 2021. So, so you can see that uh, we, we operate from Tamaulipas. It's our, our, our port of, of installation of the glider. Sometimes we use opportunity ships to, to, to install the gliders in deep waters. But pretty much we operate from the Western Gulf of Mexico. Sometimes we do uh, synchronized missions with several gliders in the water. One time we had three gliders in the water at the same time. So, well, we pretty much survey um, this um, mesoscale soup of eddies of different sign. Uh, this, this, this clearly indicates that our, our monitoring is regional. So, so we, we, are, we are focusing on the western region of the Gulf of Mexico. This is because the battery, uh, the endurance of the, of the sea gliders. And we, we have been doing a continuous monitoring. So over 18 missions, we've been, we travel about 25,000 kilometers during 1,500 days, and we perform about 9,700 dives. Um, if we check the statistics per mission, uh, here I show the number of dives, number of days, and, and kilometers travel um, per mission. So in average, we do about 500 dives per mission during 80 days, sorry, and uh, we travel 13 kilometers uh, horizontally. Um, we operate pretty much uh, uh, in water columns deeper than 1,000 meters, between 1,000 and 300, 3,000 meters. And we do um, uh, regional monitoring. No? Um, we, we operate uh, no, no further than five, 500 kilometers. All the data can, can be visualized in, in our own uh, visualization tool of GMOC, of this group of monitoring the ocean. Here I'm showing an ongoing mission, 20 that uh, we deployed the glider in at, at November 2021. In this platform, you can choose the mission and, and superimpose the trajectory over a map, uh, satellite map can be SST or, or ADT. Uh, actually, this data, it's being provided to Smith that Fabio is gonna talk about uh, later on. And we are, we, we are interested in, in, in also distributing this data uh, to GQS specifically to the platform Gandalf. Um, if you scroll down here, you can scroll down in this visualization tool and, and you can check the images of, of the, the, the data of the, the mission until present. These are PNG images of each variable uh, that, uh, of the sensors that have these gliders specific. <coughs> you can scroll down and also you find a visualization tool that you can choose a range of, of dives and just visualize some, some variable for this range of dives. Um, what are the observations that we've been doing during this, these years? Um, as I stated at the beginning, uh, we have been sampling a lot of mesoscale structures, anticyclonic eddies it's here on the left side. I show this sampling, this uh, section across the Loop Currenery Poseidon, showing that these eddies are, are very huge uh, warm anomalies reaching nine, nine degrees of, of temperature anomaly. So, so this is a, a lot of uh, food for, for the hurricanes. Um, and we also uh, sampled uh, loop current frontal eddies and, and the Campeche cyclone that is this semi-stationary cyclone that it's constrained topographically um, in the Campeche Bay. These are very cold anomalies reaching uh, six degrees colder than the surrounding waters. This, this has been possible um, using the, the city sail on, on the sea glider because it's a hydrography, what I'm showing here. And because the high resolution that provides sea gliders, um, we're talking about like mm, three kilometers on the horizontal and, and we have a dive, a, a profile every three, four hours. Um, so we've been, been able to, to sample some uh, subsurface Submesoscale cyclones that I'm showing here, like a stacked, uh, a stacked uh, uh, isopignals at depth. Uh, in this other image of square broom by Sala, this is showing stratification across the Loop Currenelli Poseidon. This is the main thermocline of the Poseidon, and beneath the thermocline, we found this this uh, bulge of of low stratification surrounded by high stratification. These are Submesoscale intrathermocline eddies, anticyclonic ones are rotating um, 
uh, anticyclonically, and they are also translating with the large loop current, loop current eddy. So it was, was a very amazing finding. And on the peripheries of the eddy, because the large vertical shear that, that is on the periphery of this large loop current eddies, we also find this formation of layers that are, um, uh, they, they have a, a, a small verti vertical scales of few mirrors, but very long uh, horizontal coherence of tens of kilometers, sorry, again. Um, and we find these, um, these layers uh, that are submesoscale structures also at the periphery of the eddies. Finally, we've been sampling a lot, a lot of submesoscale filaments uh, with high chlorophyll concentration and fresh, fresh filaments that are typically advected um, by, by mesoscale structures that are located offshore and advect these, these plumes uh, offshore uh, thousands of kilometers. This can be seen on this TS diagram on the left. These are the mean T TS diagrams uh, per mission. And, and what we see is a lot of fresh water uh, filaments. We, we, we systematically sample on the peripheries of the eddies and these uh, filaments wrapping around um, these large eddies. And also we observe at the depth of the subtropical underwater, we observe a large variability on the TS diagrams that is showing the inter uh, variability from loop current eddy to eddy. They, they, they don't have uh, the, the same amount of salt and, and also it's showing the processes of transformation of North Atlantic subtropical underwater to Gulf common water, like I show here. These are two sections of the same eddy, loop current eddy Poseidon in summer left salinity and in winter right. And we see a high salinity core of the subtropical underwater in summer that it's eroded or diluted um, during the, the winter uh, through the, the passage of these cold fronts or, or what we call uh, northeast winds. Um, finally, I would like to finish with a, a, another uh, a biological process that we observe inside the loop current eddies. And again, these are two sections across the loop current eddy Poseidon. These two, this is the core of the eddy and this is the periphery. On color, I'm showing the concentration of chlorophyll A. What we see is the chlorophyll, it's pretty much following this isopignal. This is the deep chlorophyll maximum located about 120 meters. And when the northern winds come on winter, a lot of events of cold front passages over the eddy, um, what, what we found is that the chlorophyll is pretty much distributed uh, uh, in the deeper mixed layer. And we believe that this intensification are in, are, are, are match the passage of this, of this cold fronts. And these are um, new productivity. We don't, we don't know, but we believe that there is